This video is about creating data flow. So the first thing you've got to do when you're creating data flow is you've got to decide how you're going to present it. This is one way of presenting data flow. And at the end of this video, I'll show you one other way of presenting data flow, the same data flow, but in a slightly adjusted way. And you can decide which one is your favorite. So the first thing you need to do is in your um, structure chart, which is what this is, you suggest what the problem is. So let's say that the problem I'm trying to solve is the house point system, keeping in line with uh, what we did in lesson 10. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to ask the user uh, to log in. And then once we've uh, asked them to log in, we're going to validate password. And then we're going to um, show um, house sorry, show uh, students list. And then the last thing we're going to do is we're going to um, update house points tools. Okay, and it's just a kind of a broken, uh, sorry, very cut down version of the house point system. So we're getting the user to log in, we're validating the password, then we're showing the student list so they can choose from the student list. And then we're going to update their house point totals. So imagine it like a bit like a spreadsheet. So the thing about data flow is that if you're asking users uh, some to give them uh, to give you some values, you don't often need to pass data in. So we take that arrow away. When we're validating the password, we'll probably need the username, uh, the information the user provides to validate the password. Uh, we might also need that to show the student list, and we might need to pass things in to update the house points tools. So uh, we'll we'll start on the left hand side, and we'll talk about it as we go. So when we ask the user, user to log in. Uh, we will get the username, okay? And I'll just make that as small as possible so you can see all this. Oh, maybe a bit bigger than that. Okay, so we've got our username and that data comes out of the ask user to login section and we can pass it in uh, to validate the password. So maybe uh, this bit here takes in the username and says, oh, cool, now tell me your password, okay? So uh, we pass in the username, it asks the password, and then we can pass out something that's useful uh, for the rest of the program. So it might just be the list of students. Um, so this, the list of students um, as a 1D array or something like that, that's coming back out so that we can then display it later on. Now, we're showing the student list, we can only pass in things we already have. So we've got usernames and student list, uh, but we just want to show the student list. And then when uh, they go into that section, they're probably going to pass out the selected student. Okay. Um, and as well as the selected student, they're probably also going to pass out um, the, the points that you want to award them. There you go. So we've got select student coming out and we've got points and if that's maybe a bit better so you can actually see it's coming out. When we update the house point totals, uh, we're probably going to pass back in the selected student and the number of points and then what comes back out is probably going to be uh, all of the house points okay, um, for all the students. So that'll pass back the student points uh, array or record set so that we can pass that on to all the other, uh, sorry, we, we can display that all of the other students uh, points totals. Now, that, like I say, that's just a sort of very sort of brief insight into how to do the data flow in and out. Sometimes you don't necessarily want to pass data in uh, or out but in these inst instances, we've got one coming out and then everything's going in and coming out uh, there. I said I was going to show you one other way of doing this, and uh, it's using a table. So we're going to represent exactly the same thing as a structure chart, exactly the same variables, but in a table. So as you can see, this is the table method. So we've got exactly the same steps, okay? But in our table, we've got a data in column and a data out column. And so just like in a structure chart, your program goes, or the program logic runs from left to right. So it asks the user to log in, then it validates the password, then it shows the student list, then it updates the house points totals. The table 
uh, works from top to bottom. So it asks the user to log in first, then it validates the password, then it shows the student list, then it updates house point totals. And I'll show you the difference between these uh, structure charts and data flow tables. So we've got username coming out. So that's just username. Okay, there's no data coming in, so you can just leave that table blank. Sometimes people decide to color code it uh, or just shade it in slightly so you can fill it in gray. So it's obvious that there's no data uh, coming in. Um, it's entirely up to you if you want to do that. Uh, for validate password, we've got username going in and the student list coming out, which is the array. Then we've got student list going in to show students list. Uh, but what is coming out, there's two values. There's selected student and points. So we've got selected student and points. Okay. And then for updating the house points, we have selected students and points going in so that they can be changed. And what's coming out is the array of student points in this instance. Okay, so we've got two different ways of showing data flow in a program. The structure chart method, where you've got arrows, and the table method. And it's entirely up to you which one you want to use. However, when you do this, or once you've done this, sorry, the next step is to go into detail for each of the steps and actually write the pseudocode to use these or generate new data for these um, variables that are coming in and out of your subroutines.